What's up? So today's video is about all of the things that I am learning and have learned and want to learn uh, at the moment. I just finished end week, it went really well, and so of course we have to start off with the varsity work I've been learning. So of course, I just finished end week and I, it was pretty good actually, it went really well. I wrote my control systems test yesterday and it was quite difficult, this is what the test looked like actually. I don't know if I'm breaking any copyright laws or anything by showing you my tests like this, but yeah, it was pretty difficult. I, I battled to finish in time, but I just managed to finish. I actually got like a page of calculations down for every question, which is something that not always happens. It doesn't always happen, so I was grateful for that. Earlier in the week, I wrote my digital design test, which was, was if you could read the notes and you, you'd studied and watched the videos, you could kind of answer it. It was pretty self-explanatory, so that was fine. And then my math test on Saturday went pretty decently as well. I answered almost all, I think I answered every single question, which again, is, is a good thing and doesn't always happen. And I think I, I was feeling quite confident at the end of it. So yeah, I only wrote three tests this week because um, MIA, Engineering History, Group Work Management, that thing, doesn't have a semester test now, it's got some class tests later. But so yeah, I've been learning a lot of varsity work, just been sitting at this desk, grafting, studying, and it went really well, so I was really happy about that. Now on to the fun stuff that I've been learning. So, I have become completely besotted with and interested by Amazon Web Services and the Google Cloud Platform and cloud computing this last week. So, I watched um, this video. And I was so interested in that because, you know, you, you, you think about as a person in the modern day era who works with computers, you know intuitively that people handle workloads on the clouds and computers run the cloud and the internet, you know, so, man, so much stuff is done in big data centers somewhere. But only when you start reading about it and Googling it, do you realize actually how much of the internet is run by three companies uh, in data centers all around the world and how powerful they are and how easy those services actually are to access to the average user. I wrote a blog post about it on my new and upcoming website recently, but basically just how incredibly powerful and how easy it is to access some of the most powerful computing power on the world is for the average user. If you have an internet connection, you can access these expensive GPUs and that's that cost 40,000 Rand and you can pay for them by the hour to train machine learning models or to you know run your web services off of and you pay per function invocation on the Google Cloud platform. And I know this is really high level stuff in that and I haven't done anything with it, but just reading about it this past week and seeing how easy it is for the average user anywhere in the world with an internet connection to be controlling some of the most powerful computing hardware in the world is just so awesome and just incredible. And I read a book a while ago called Permutation City um, where people were immortal on that and when because when they died they could just upload themselves to the cloud and their brain continued existing in a data center somewhere and then they could interact with everyone. And, you know, the story aside, the, everyone had access to some of the most powerful computation powers in the world in that, uh, and they could run simulations on these computers and on this cloud service that could model atoms, that could model, um, you know, whether, you know, huge complicated systems in that that they could play around with and the discoveries that it led to and the prosperity it brought to humanity was incredible. And we are living in that modern day era now with Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform. Like, you can go and you can rent these expensive machines and that and do with them whatever you want. Mine cryptocurrency, start businesses, you know, train machine learning models, all these amazing things that 20 years ago weren't possible for anyone except, uh, you know, Microsoft or that with a huge uh, data center or a huge supercomputer and now you and me the average person can get on board with that and use it and create businesses and it just makes me so excited for my career and almost jealous that I have to do varsity works and that I can't be playing with these amazing awesome tools so I've been learning that this last week and it's been incredible Another thing I've been getting more and more interested in is aquaponics and, you know, the aquarium culture and that. So I um, I just cleaned my fish tank this morning and I cut some grass and that. But it's looking really great. It's looking really healthy and that. You can see because I changed the water, so some bubbles floating up here. It's really cool. Two of my shrimp are pregnant. This one here, you can't really see anything. I'll overlay some footage here of the pregnant shrimps. They're really quite amazing in that as they shuffle their eggs around. Um, but yeah, this is the fish tank. It's looking really healthy. I cut back the water lettuce um, this morning as well. Let me see if I can get underneath here. Uh, yeah, you can't really see it. But yeah, that water lettuce was growing so far deep down in that. And just, it's so pretty and it's such an interesting thing to learn. And it's just so cool to see this little ecosystem and that just taking shape and happening in my room and all the life and that that's happening. It always makes me think of primordial earth and that where it was just watery sea and like volcanic vents and that and where the first specks of life started up um, in the deep deep part of the ocean and that and slowly started uh, transforming into more and more advanced life. Yes, it just makes me so excited to think about and 
the same thing that's happening in this little aquarium here happened that millions and billions and trillions, not trillions, billions of years ago <laughs> in the primordial seas and that. And I can replicate the same kind of thing, the same life-giving process in my bedroom and watch it happen and watch it take place. This hornwort, this plant here has grown stupendously. This Amazon sword at the front is amazingly big now. And then just also, uh, also playing a bit of God. So learning about the different water parameters, how important the heater is, the things at 24 degrees right now, how the right type of light is important. That's a compact fluorescent light. I had a, just a normal LED bulb there before that wasn't working so nicely, it wasn't growing nicely. And so learning how the different parameters in that affect uh, different ecosystems is so interesting to me because humans, you know, we just, we can kind of go anywhere. We breathe air and that, but you know, we also need a certain level of cold, certain level of humidity, certain day and night cycle for our sleep diurnal cycles to work in that. And so seeing what uh, fish and shrimp and snails and that need as opposed to humans has also been so interesting and then moving on from this aquarium tank i've got this here this little contraption here what you might think hey mitch what are you doing over here with this strange contraption here and this light and that and i'll tell you so this experiment here is my attempt at growing strawberries so I was uh, Googling the other day when I was eating some strawberries, how to grow them. And you usually propagate them from other small plants. But if you take a strawberry from the shops and peel off some of the seeds and that, where you pick them out with a toothpick and plant them in a very humid environment, you can grow strawberries. And so that's what I've got here. I've just got this small LED light on a thing of soil here. And I've got this uh, cling wrap on top, keeping the moisture in. And lo and behold, I've got a strawberry plant growing. Um, and it's actually really pretty. Yeah, take a look. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I have a strawberry plant growing and it's actually gotten really big in just the last three days and that my dad confirmed that it's a strawberry plant with this with the spiky edges here and it's growing really nicely so I'm going to plant it out into a bigger container soon and keep it humid and hopefully in a couple of months I'll have some strawberries and it's just uh, because Varsity has been so tough and so difficult at the moment it's been so rewarding and so interesting to get involved with aquaponics and the aquarium and plant growing and that because it's just something so different and it's something so easy to watch and to have progress in and it makes you feel really valuable as a creator and not just a destroyer or like a consumer like you're actually creating life and creating ecosystems and you know helping to build something and even as small as a little fish tank or a, a strawberry plant it's really really rewarding my dad has been an avid gardener for years now in fact he planted our entire garden um, <sighs> Every single one of these trees in our garden, my dad has planted. And you know, see some of them are massive. Um, and I think there's an old saying, there's an old saying that the true measure of a man uh, is when he plants trees that he won't live to see grow to fruition. Or he, you know, plant trees that only his ancestors and that will get to enjoy. And so I've always respected my dad a lot for that. And he's a huge gardener. He's got a whole big nursery outside. And I've never really gotten into gardening and that. But I've always liked aquaponics and water and fish tanks. And I guess now I'm moving into the plant growing sphere. Maybe it's something that comes with age. You get more interested in it. But it's been really rewarding. And I'll update you with my strawberry plant progress. And when my shrimps eventually give birth. They should be giving birth uh, in the next week or so. Which I'm really excited for. And so yeah. Those are all the things that I've been learning recently and in the last week. Um, I've been listening to the At Home audiobook by Bill Bryson. Really interesting, uh, long-winded approach to documenting how the things we take for granted in our house today came to be. Things like beds and couches and why we have a dining room and why forks have three prongs on them, that kind of stuff. And through a whirlwind history of the industrialization of uh, humanity and in particular Britain, Bill Bryson uh, wrote some incredible books, A Short History of Nearly Everything is an amazing read. He's, uh, I can't lie, being a bit long-winded and taking a long time to get to the point in this book. He, like, he delves into the details of what this guy who invented the toilet brush uh, used to do for lunch and dinner and what his mistress thought of him and what society thought of him and then eventually gets back to the toilet brush in its place in the home. Um, but I'm learning a lot, very interesting, some really interesting facts in that about ancient British society. Did you know that British people in the 1800s and that used to blacken their teeth to appear more like the rich people who had black teeth from eating so much sugar? Because the more sugar you had, the more wealthy you, the more wealthy you are, the more sugar you had. So the more black your teeth were, the wealthier you appeared. Crazy things like that that we might laugh at today, but we do stupid stuff today like whitening our teeth. Um, and the things that seem so normal today, you know, have a place in history and uh, came, came often just because of luck or circumstance. And so it's really interesting to learn and to read about that. My friend Kate Scoltz uh, always says that she loves to learn. She's a lifelong learner. And I got to agree with her there. Like, I just love to learn and I've just 
despite the varsity work, ignoring the maths, ignoring all the kinds of things that I've learned at varsity, I've been learning so many other things recently, so many interesting things. And so this has been really uh, enjoyable and it's been something that I've been, uh, you know, filling my days with as opposed to just worrying about the pandemic and worrying about the future. And when we're going back to varsity, probably March, probably going to have a three-month holiday, definitely going to get a job. But yeah, it's been really interesting. And thank you for listening to all the things that I've been learning recently. I'll see you in the next video. Ooh, that was a very long one take. My voice is tired. Yes, it was one take.